Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. My name's Chris Ormi. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you very much for joining us here for some more Starters Order 7 once more. Um, this has been quite good so far. You know, we've had a lot of success. I think we were set up to have a little bit more. Um, I'm quite happy the way things are working out. We're getting some grade ones on our four-year-olds that we didn't think we would. We've got some three-year-olds starting to look good, one of which could be a triple crown contender. Uh, and a bunch of two-year-olds, which honestly, as always, are up in the air. So what I've done is I've put four horses, four two-year-olds out to pasture already. Um, they've basically maxed out their potential for this season. I don't see them, you know, doing too much more apart from just gaining rating or maybe a couple of grades here or there. Um, we've got so many competitions, so much competition for the two-year-olds for races. They all run basically six furlong apart from one, which would be Red Dynamite out in the field. So there's no races for them anyway. And everyone else at, at six, apart from Sweet Chili, was probably at five. Like, that's very difficult to book races for just because, you know, you're booking like 12 horses for the same race. And it's just not working out. So... When they've hit their potential, I'm moving them out into the field. I think that's the best way of doing things. Uh, and I'm quite happy doing that right now. So we've got some other races. We've also got some good races down the back for April with the Grade 1 winners. Uh, before that, there's a bunch of 2- and 3-year-olds who aren't really racing great. Marie W gets another shot at a Grade 1. Uh, Adonis and Queen Rook get chances as well. I believe... That's in, ooh, is that Turfentine? Is it Clow? No, that's Turfentine. That's Turf, uh, it's definitely South Africa. I think it's Turfentine. 2nd of April is out to Dubai for Adonis and Queen's Rook. And then Holy Norma gets a couple of shots at grade ones um, to see. That's Turfentine as well there. She gets her shot right there. Um. Yeah, no, sorry, that's right. Because Marie W's on the Triple Crown um, hunt. So, a couple of prep races for Marie. That's Turfentine. Yes. Um, apart from that, a bunch of races really sort of quick in. We've got a couple of grid uh, opportunities in this bunch. But, I, you know, I don't know how good. I think with the day before racing... You know, jumping in early. So, okay. We're going to start off with Karate Queen. Only three races. Only two ever at the correct distance for her. Um, yeah. Yeah. A couple of chances at a mile three, grade three. If she wins this one, we'll run the next one. If she doesn't, I'll step out of it. Um, basically, if I don't think she can win, we'll step out and we'll wait for that mile four which is probably much better for us. Um, overall, though, like we ran the Maiden, and then we were off distance for both of these slightly. I still think we're kind of off distance, but like, there's just not been races. So we'll see what Karate Queen can do here. Mile 3, Grade 3. I don't think we know these horses. We should be lowest weight, highest rated. Probably a very good horse for the field. I know our potential is low, or our, as I call it, the ability is low, but the potential is quite high. So if we can make some headway onto that and give us a chance at developing this horse quite nicely over a mile three and mile four, um, and if we're not, if we don't have a good chance at the Belmont with any other horse, maybe we throw Karate Queen into that and see if we can sneak a grade one win there. So, Equine Science up in front, Tariq 2, just there alongside us. Now, as we move up into position, back to Crisanti, Elizan, Lucibol, and La Bellafre. Looks like we're on stalking. Duty's turn to leading us out. Two from home. Down to the final furlong, and we fall all the way back into fourth place. I mean, it's going to take a hell of a run to come back from this. 
Now we start seeing... Yeah, now we're, we're falling back all the way to the post. For a second, it looked like we were coming back. Just you know, didn't work out. Just didn't work out. Didn't have the pace to get into the race. Normally, that means more distance. So, yeah, okay. I mean... Yeah, probably a mile four. Probably a mile four. Did a bit of good. Not much, but like I say, we've got a lot of unfulfilled potential that we really need to try and get in on Crafty Queen, but it's not going to be over a mile three. Really, she wants a mile four, and there's just been absolutely nothing. There's been handicaps, there's been foreign races, there's been selling races. None of those are what we're looking for. So, okay. So, be it Samarinda and Point It Tack. Go to New York. Check the auction. Nothing there. Let's go. Samarinda. Okay. Very calm. Stroll is sweating badly. A northern flame has boiled over. Dumbrody House is sweating badly. Slightly agitated, a little bit keen as we're pound. And we're very calm. So, okay, a bunch of interesting horses here. Um, we're not far off being top rated. We're up there. We're pretty much up there. Um, okay, well, I guess that will do for me. I think we've got a shot at this. I don't know. If I think we can win, I mean, it's raining. That that always changes things. Uh, again, I like the horse. I just don't think it's an amazing horse. Grade three, Samarinda has not yet won a grade, so this is a nice opportunity to remedy that, to step up, to, uh, to challenge the horse. It's over a mile, which I think was the right, the right distance. I think that's what we came to. At the moment, shoving up. And stroll up in the lead. Dumbrody and Whiphound. It looks like we're coming up there on the outside. Coming off this bend. Two and a half down to the final two. A line of four chasing down Chevenard now. There goes Dumbrody House up the inside. We've got no principles inside us. Custom House and Whiphound coming from deep. Samarinda out wide. Starting to make a little bit of movement. But who's moving the fastest down the final far half furlong? Are we going to get the job done? Samarinda powering out down the outside. There's a grade three. There's a good win. Samarinda, finally a graded horse, over a mile, in the rain, out wide, driving home in front of a good field. I felt that was a good field. Nice. Nice. I think we, I think we challenged a little later than some of our other horses. We tend to go early. At the moment, I think we're breeding in a lot of sort of mid-pack to closer sort of rear runners where we, we tend to go towards the middle or the back of the pack, not so much the front of the pack in general. And we do tend to challenge really early. Um, and that's not really how I like my horses to go, but that just seems to be the way it is. This one, again, did go to the back of the pack, but, you know, Kind of went, came through late rather than early, I'd say. So, a solid win, a graded race. I think a good field. So, we'll see how that works out. Point attack is another maiden. I just hope that we can get a win here. Come on. Oh. We're like right there. We're right there. One and three quarters. Three quarters. Ah, quarter of a length. Like, just... Ew. It's got pace. It's got acceleration. Like, it's... It needs to step up now. It does need to step up. Tiny little abilities increases are not going to help it. It looks like a really good horse. If we can win a maiden and gain another 10%, 
I think that's probably it done for the season. I think it was... I think this one started at 40% potential. So it's up to 50. Normally it does 20 in its maiden season. So... Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't know if that one's going to make it. I keep thinking it's going to do all right and then... It just doesn't win. I think we need a, a. I don't know if we need if we need it to win. It might just get some more stamina and we'll run it over longer. Maybe it wins then. I don't think it's a five furlong. Nothing we've been told has been five furlong. But I think that might be that might be the only way left to go. Okay, nineteenth of March. Let's get a small field. Seventh of April will come back round to that one near the end of our runs. Um and yeah, we'll kinda just see how that works out, I guess. Ugh. That wasn't the best, though. It wasn't the best. Okay, Night Naku, and then Safranana again. Another one that's been close, but not won a maiden yet. Night Naku's on a grade two, so a chance to upgrade again over a mile. I think Night Naku, I think Night prefers a seven furlong, but there just weren't any races. So I'm pushing up into a mile, and I'm pushing up to grade two. We'll see how we handle that transition. We're definitely not amongst the favourites here. New distance, new quality, much higher rated people with grade two wins. I don't think we'll be favourite for this. I do not believe we should be favourite for this at all. But it's a good test, and if we do something, then I'll be very, very happy with that. I think Smurfy Silver... Uh, let's see if we can find where they are. There they are in the red with the white um, chevron, or is it just a stripe, diagonal stripe maybe? In the lead anyway, with Safe Care and Strictly Pink just ahead of them. Then Bible Box ahead of the rest of the field. We're on the inside in this chasing pack at the back, like we like to run in general. Going to run a tight bend. Going to get out early. Going to be able to get into position quite well. Then we run very, very wide to give others room. And again, it doesn't look like an early challenge from us. It looks like a late challenge, if any, as Smurfy Silver, as expected, is just dominating this race. And we're going to fall back behind Bible Box. We're down to fifth, sixth, seventh. Ooh. Yeah, that wasn't good. Tardy start. I didn't really see a tardy start, but okay. Like we say, bad starts usually one to two lengths, depending. We didn't get blocked off. We didn't run too poorly. I'd say maybe the whole race, including the start, would be about two lengths. So we'd be about three back, which it fights for second place. But I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure that was ever going to be our chance. Um, apparently we like the mile, but I'm not sure about that. Okay, Saffron. We've come third, we've come second. Let's go win one. Let's go win one, Saffronana. Oh, thank you. 65. 65. Didn't gain anything. I was hoping that would be a, a gain of potential. So 65 out of 75. Did well. Didn't enjoy the ground. Didn't run spectacularly. But you know what? That's a decent win in that case. Um, yeah. But might not cool. I mean, probably still going to run it at 7. It's got a much better chance. I think it's got a much better chance there. Drill Sergeant.
Okay. Uh, you look good, but you don't look special. As a three-year-old, you're barely going to get to 70 unless you develop a lot later. Uh, yeah, no, no, drill sergeant's gone. I don't see the point in continuing when I've got so many other two-year-olds, which will make much better three-year-olds. Uh, and I don't race a lot of four usually. This is very unusual, the situation we're in, so, so be it. Right, point of dream up next, grade three. Another disappointing horse where we've run well, but we haven't won at all. So we're on weight for this. We are top rated. We are quite laid back. So that might cause an issue there. Just a normal seven furlong grade three with a terrible start. Oh, my gosh. You don't, you, know, you don't see many worse starts than that. We're up then into the mid-pack now. We're just stalking behind Nampara Bay alongside Moonby Ridge. Comrade Bob, Lucky, Henry, and back to Eluding Star on the outside. We're going to try and go up the inside. It works out for us. Down into the final two furlongs. Neck and neck almost with Nampara Bay. Just ahead. Down at the final furlong marker. I said Nampara Bay is not going anywhere. We're slowly pushing out into the lead. And there we go. Just a little charge for the line. Point of dream. Make sure. Seals the deal on that grade three. Three quarters of a length. I think we were always in second gear there. It didn't look like we were really going for it. Up to 75% ability. You know, I don't mind that. That's, that's good. Um... But yeah, that wasn't a great run. That was not a great run. But it's a graded race. And after some of the issues we've had trying to get Point of Dream there, I will take it. Okay, so. Decent so far. Decent. Still not a great season record at all. Um... Let's go into this auction then. Oh, my God. Okay. Okay. Save the game. Never know when a random crash is going to happen. And I'd rather it sort of have a, a save point to go back to. Okay. So, old horses. Old horses. But... A grade three and a grade two on private rows. That's okay. 113 rating. Five of 20 is not a bad career record. You know, only 400,000 in prize money. It's not superb, but it's, it could be something you might want to breed from. That might not be a bad horse. And then Material Lady, five graded wins. A three, two twos, and two ones. 119 rated. You know, 2.8 million. That's pretty good. Six from 31, that's not bad record. Nine years of age. Like, she's getting up there, but she's still, you know, still being a good horse. Could be worth breeding from at least once. At least once. And then best terms. Six of 33. Like, the worst record of the three, let's be fair. But 3.8 million, nearly 3.9. Five grade one wins. 125 rated. We just... See, Private Rose is excitable. Private Rose is excitable. Doesn't come from breeding. Yeah, I'm going to back off that one. Material Lady, a mile two. Okay. So, I mean, you look here, there's a second place. So that could easily be another grade one. That second could be another grade one. That third could be another grade one. That third could be another grade one. That second could be another... Like, this could be, like, seven or eight grade one wins. It easily could. And this is the horse that produced QVivo. Who some of you want me to breed from? Oh, 
On Trend. I don't think I've ever heard of On Trend. So there's Material Lady. I think we're definitely in on Material Lady. It's got a big time winner in Q Vivo. It's got a big time winner in Q Vivo. And not only that, the rest of the things look good. Now, best terms, similar distance, just a touch shorter. Again, though, there's a third, a second, a second. So that's another three it could have won right there. And then second, second, third, second, third, third. Like, there's so many races. There's so many races here that it could have won more grade ones. Oh, my. I'm glad to see it's not excitable. I'm glad to see it's not excitable. It comes from Benny's Mist at one a million. And Royal Ballerina is already... Already a grade one winner. And again, second, 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 second. Could easily be a four or five grade one winner right now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So we got the breathing pedigree in both of them. We got the racing pedigree in both of them. They could have won a lot more grade one wins. This is what you want to save your money for on breathing auctions. Now, it's probably going to take a lot. We're probably looking at like five, six million for the pair. If not more, private rows on top of that probably be another one and a half. Something like card games would probably be another million. So if you do get these horses showing up, then you're probably going to be spending decent money getting there. So I'm going to push it to 2.5 and see. Yeah, 2.5 will do it. Round that out a little bit. Best terms is going to be our horse. Just over 2.5 million. And then Material Lady. This is probably going to be similar. Going to go to two threes. Yeah, two three. As expected, will get us a horse. So, uh, so what's that? That's 4.8 million. It's just under 5 million for the pair. Best terms. Oof. I mean, we liked what we've seen. We've, we've liked what we've seen. The only thing, though, is the stats. No, potential might be low just because it's older, it's regressed. The rest of the bars are slightly more important for me here. So no confidence, which really surprises me. But good cruising burst. Okay, speed rating. Okay, okay, okay. Like, there's nothing really amazing here. Did have good potential at one point, but we've regressed all the way down, as expected, being an older horse. Still going to breed from them. Still going to breed from them. And then Material Lady. Yeah, I could see them being a slightly... They're probably a mile one, in my opinion. Whereas best terms might be a mile two. So... Swap the breeding indicators round, I guess. Um, yeah, got everything looking good apart from potential. Still going to try breeding from it. Still going to try breeding from it. Still going to try breeding from it. Oh, what do I do? What do I do? Um... I mean, Dream Euro didn't breed with someone. We did say we'd breed Dream Euro with somebody. Okay. You can have your say on the comment section. Which one would you breed with Dream Euro? Which one would you breed with somebody else? See, I, I mean, Halifax is there. We love Halifax. He's our horse. We love Halifax. We could breed with QVivo, but if we did, 
we really shouldn't breed it with material lady that that just shouldn't be the way so that would be best terms of queen vivo and then maybe dream euro material lady my other thought is if we wait a little bit and we just get another george w out of it like george w and material lady could work out really really well the best terms there's no weaknesses there's just really no strength if we look at it that way there's no strength and dream euro pretty similar pretty similar we couldn't even get a grade one out of him um so yeah i'm not sure I'm not sure I want to breed from Dream Euro, despite the fact he's got 80 extra speed and 85 potential. Um, not really with these two. I think I want to try George W with one of these. So I think that'll be about 85 extra speed. I think that would be 85 extra speed. That would be a ton of extra speed. What was Halifax's extra speed? You see, that won't move the needle very much, will it? We're not going to have high extra speed on whatever comes out of that pairing. I think I save Material Lady for George W. We keep Halifax on the shelf. And I think we put best terms in QVivo together. So if it's got extra speed, if it's got 8 euro above, that means QVivo had 90 euro above. So we'll split the difference and be able to tell where we are um and also 75 potential we'll be able to tell kind of where we are on that front too so yeah if we have a hundred percent finish application or a zero finish application again we'll be able to tell that's actually what qvivo has because you now we're dead in the middle of that some of the other bars don't work quite like that but a lot of them are split so we'll see what the confidence is, cruising burst, extra speed, finish, and potential. We can see kind of where QVivo is. But I think I'm going to hold Material Lady just for now. And we're going to go George W there. I think that makes the most sense to me. And then if we add anything else to the barn this season, we'll have a look again and see if it makes sense for Dream Europe and Halifax. So I want to breed a lot from Halifax too. But while George W's there, I just don't feel like we can ignore that. I just don't feel like we can ignore that. Like, what am I doing? We don't have a race today. Um. Yeah. Yeah, let me know your thoughts on that. I got caught up in the breeding there for a second. But another two... Decent horses coming through those breeding auctions. Kind of interesting. Rios Rosana. Oh my god, this is going to be... Oh, this is the first time in a while I think we've had, like, true competition going into a Kentucky Derby. It's going to be 100%. 100%. Raw Ballerina, Rios Rosana, and us. Oh, that's what I think the top three is going to be like. Uh, everyone looks okay. Rios Rosana will be favorite. That's the horse to beat. I like Marie W. I really, really do. I think she's got some really, really good stats. But Rios Rosana is a little bit of a beast. She's on the outside. 
in that red with the uh, diagonal white stripes. Royal Ballerina is in the blue there in the middle of the field, all alone. Deep Sand in second, just inside Rios Rosana. And we're on the outside of this chasing pack at the back. Fashion Day a little bit detached on the inside at the rear. Looks like we're in a decent position. We're not running too wide for the number of horses. Down the final stretch here. Here comes Royal Ballerina. We're going to be there as well. Final furlong. Kicking on down the home stretch. A few horses up here. Royal Ballerina comes past. And we're going to edge out. Oh, I think we just edged out for second place there. Halona coming up from deep. Rios Rosan actually fell off. But Royal Ballerina, who we now know was foaled by one of the horses in our barn. We, uh, yeah. We now have best terms. Like, they're going in the Kentucky Derby. I think they're on mile one. I think Rios might be more a miler. They might be a miler. So they might be going too much. But they're both going into the Kentucky Derby. Okay. So is Marie W. Uh, I think we need a good run to get there and to do well. And I'm hoping we run better over a mile two than either of them. It's kind of what I'm hoping right now. But yeah, I don't see any of these other three-year-olds really being in the right distance for it. I've got to be honest. And Marie, I mean, we want more enthusiasm. We'd love more consistency, full finish application. If I could get enthusiasm up to 50 and a full finish and consistency bar, like I normally like my horses to get, I think Marie W would be an absolute beast of a horse. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a tough one. It's going to be a tough one. The first time we're going into Kentucky Derby in a long time, knowing we've got a really good horse, but also knowing the competition is so, so difficult. Queen's Rook. Okay, Palace Street comes with us. Nijinsky's Beauty as well. Decent horses. Uh, Palace Street, of course, knows a very, very good horse. Will be top rated. Lyric Street is here as well. Um... Yeah, solid field. Not going to overthink it. Not going to overlook it. We've got a chance. We have a chance. Queen's Rook is good enough to run well on her day to win. Golden Shaheen in Dubai. Six furlong grade one. We're off. We're not off to a bad start. We will go to the back of the pack here, though, with 17 runners and that puts a ton in between us and Blue Sovereign and Lyric Street, who are the front two right now. Down to the final, furlong and a half. We seem to be quite some way back. It's going to take an absolute phenomenal run to get up there. Blue Sovereign coming up. There comes Blanard, Lizzie, called it. Here comes the field. Uh, in fact, the only horse from the field that isn't really coming up is Queen's rock so i think palace street actually took that just about on the line here on the outside yeah just pushing out over miming so palace street comes away with a pretty good win a pretty good win um yeah that wasn't that that wasn't what we were hoping for that wasn't what we were hoping for, but okay. Uh, we the only foreign horse. Oh, my God. We're the only foreign horse. Top rated on weight. Only foreign horse. The best form horse. Oh, I mean, Silver Adonis. We know Silver Adonis can win these. We know it's going to be tough. We know Oki Denuliak is in this. Like, they're going to be the best of the Dubai horses, I think. One mile, two furlong. It's the Dubai World Cup. 
19 runners. We're okay. Off okay in the, in the middle there. And there's an absolute ton of horses up front. Oh my. See, I hate these races. Large fields scare me because we like to run near the back. And there we are. And it's so easy to imagine, especially as we go inside to the rail, how we're going to get blocked off before the end of the race. So I don't really want to see that. Out of sight, out of mind. We'll come into it at some point. We'll have to find a path through or around. And we will see. Final two furlongs. Persian Jasmine in the lead. Here comes Number Cruncher up the inside. Tri Nations, a very nice horse coming up the outside. Where is Silver Adonis? There is Oki Danuliak now for the final furlong, charging through up into second place. Up into first place. Oki Danuliak just getting edged by Tri Nations. Really late here by Starbeat coming through up into third. Silver Dawn is like 6th or 7th there. Yeah, down into 7th. Short headed out. Terrible run. Terrible, terrible run. So, yeah. 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 Oh, that sucked. Oh, that sucked. I mean, they're good horses. They're not great horses, but... I mean, Adonis ran really well as a three-year-old. Really well as a three-year-old. Just... Didn't impress me that. Rough day at the races. <laughs> Rough day at the races. Yao couldn't win. Adonis couldn't win. Queen's Rook couldn't win. Um, what else we had here? Point of Dream got the grade three. That's nice. Samarinda ran okay in her last race, but I mean, yeah, yeah. And Marie W didn't win either her last race, which is kind of concerning going into that Triple Crown race. Didn't look like they were close enough, so. We'll see, but yeah, a lot of my confidence kind of gone though. Point the attack. Gets a maiden win. Third time of asking, up to 50%. Did he gain? No. Didn't gain anything. Which means they're probably going to be stuck there. They're probably going to be stuck there. Yeah, I had, I had so much confidence going into this one. We'd win a couple of big races. We'll do really well. And the best thing has been a breeding auction so far. That's been the best thing. Okay. Okay. Holy Norma flying to Turfentine. Marie W. going to run a mile one in Kentucky. Chance to salvage everything. Let's see what we can do. Saves are taking some time right now. Saves are taking a lot longer than they used to. Um, yeah, normally at this point when it starts to slow down, I start a new save. That's usually what happens. Okay, Marie W. Not a great run last time. We still got Smurfy in here. We got Rios Rosana in here as well. Those horses we know quite well. It's a small field, though. It's a chance now to actually take advantage if, it's a big if, but if Rios Rosana actually only likes a mile. Oh, but it's a bad start. It's a bad start. Smurfy there, back in fourth place, being split by uh, Safe Care and... Gazette tonight. Rios Rosana up into first. We lead out. You know yourself a made of silk at the rear. On the inside. For a second, I thought we were going to get blocked off there quite quickly, but we, we managed to get a way out. Final two furlongs chasing down Rios Rosana. An early go here. Smurfy Silver trying to come with us. 
We're going to power on down the home stretch here, down at the final furlong marker. We're just ahead. Smurfy Silver coming up with some pace. Who's going to take it on the line? Point three, point two, point one. Point score to Marie W. With a win. Rios Rosana, definitely not a mile one horse. Far too good for that. Um, so Preakness... We might have, you know, we might have a different challenger. But Rios Rosanna, I don't know if they're going to be good for the Triple Crown races or not. It didn't look like in either of those two races they were, like, on pace at all. Okay, Palace Street, back again. Back again. Like, to go from winning a mile to winning six furlongs and then coming back up to a mile, wanting to run a mile one, like, this is crazy. From six furlongs to a mile one, it's one graded races. Now, we'll see if it can win a graded race here. We can see if it, if it actually wins a grade one at a mile one. But that distance adaptability... Like, I didn't think it would get six furlongs. Let's see, though. It might be a seven furlong horse with adaptability. Um, that would make sense. Which means if we're on better distance than it, we might have a chance. I don't know. Holy Norma. Oh. Not our best horse, but one of our most surprising in the series so far. And a fan favorite. It's a decent start out of the gates. Palace Street comes out of the gates last, I feel. If they can stick around the back and get blocked off. But nope, they come alongside us. And now have a chance of blocking us off over this run. Flying Kits out in the lead with Lindien and Shield Maiden. Down now, final three and a half. Look at that move up. A surge up the field. Final two furlongs. We came right up into position. There's five abreast in second place right now. We're in the middle of that line. Palace Street yet to make a move. Flying Kiss got about a four to five length lead here. Inside the final furlong. Holy Norma trying to come up. Palace Street on the outside can overtake us and come up into fourth place. Maybe gets pushed up by Miss Doody there. I think we took six. Yeah, Miss Doody just short-headed out. Couldn't quite get up on Palace Street. Not a good run. Not a good run. I mean... Yeah. Yeah, those foreign races are starting to kill us again. We had a shot before. We're trying, but we're not getting the job done. We are not quite getting the job done. So... A bit of a disappointing one in terms of the results. We've at least won a maiden with all our two-year-olds. We've won a race with everybody here, finally, including Pointed Tack, who might just have needed five furlongs. I mean, I was told, like, the trip suit did perfectly and everything, so that's not my fault, right? That's not my fault. Uh, <laughs> ugh, I hate it when it does that. But... Yeah, overall, I mean, our records, Yao and Silver Adonis still look pretty good there, especially prize money and rating-wise. They look really good. A couple others look okay. They look okay. But Reed W has got a chance, I think, in the Preakness, if not the Kentucky Derby. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. In the Breeding Barns, it looks like best terms has actually been bred to Q Vivo. And we will be meeting their progeny, Royal Ballerina, in the Kentucky Derby and the Preakness Stakes. And right now, I'm just going to say it. They're my favorite. I think they're going to win. I think they're too good not to. Um, and of course, Q Vivo actually bred from the bloodline of Material Lady. 
and will be no material lady being bred by the recently freed up George W. Maybe the last cover George W. does for us. Um, but hey, it's been it's been a fantastic one. All these doubles are George W.'s. You know, you 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 can't sort of say anything bad about them. Um, so all those covers are George W. All those doubles, and then we've got all the doubles in here. The W's, W's. So prolific for a horse that hasn't been ours. Uh, but so far, so good. Let me know what you think. We're starting to come around now into that territory. Down a little ways is the Kentucky Derby. Maricopa. Well, unbeaten. Six from six. And not only that, just one. A grade one mile two race. Interesting. A bunch of okay horses. Then my favorite, Royal Ballerina, who got shut down at a mile one. Okay. And is running quite close to that. Hopefully that will hurt them a little bit there. Hopefully that will hurt them. Rios Rosanna, decent horse, but seems to have struggled a little bit at a mile one. Will they make the leap to a mile two? Halona, solid horse. Very, very solid horse. Uh, I do feel we're very competitive with Halona. I think Royal Ballerina is a little better than us. Uh, Rios Rosanna is better, but at a shorter distance. Nobody else really worries me in that field. So we got that coming up in the next one. You know yourself, Royal Ballerina, Halona, Rios, Rosanna. So it's the same three, Royal, Rios, and Halona. Those are our three main challengers in each of these. We've also got a grade one in each race, which could end up being the dark horse. But Marie W's booked in. Kentucky Derby, Preakness Stakes. Coming to you soon. Don't miss that. Let me know what you think of our races so far and what you think of the field for the Derby and the Preakness and how you think we might do with Marie W. I'll see you there for those races and much more as usual. Thank you very much for the support. Like, comment, subscribe, etc. You know the rules. And till next time, take care of yourselves. And wish me all the luck in the world. We might just need it.